Let's thank the ACC for scheduling 2015 here in San Diego. A gorgeous day. We are looking at a pair of papers in the March 10th issue of Jack, and the theme here is Beyond Ablation, What Novel Therapies Are Ahead for AF. One paper is called Low-Level Transcutaneous Electrical Vagus Nerve Stimulation Suppresses Atrial Fibrillation. And I am with uh, David J. Callens, who is a professor of medicine at the University of Pennsylvania, and your editorial comment is entitled, Looking Beyond the Ablation Shore, I like the title, Treating Atrial Fibrillation from Afar. So there, ablation works, and it's effective, but it's certainly no cure, correct? It's certainly true, and we feel frustrated that we've been at this plateau for quite a while. I would look at this going back to the essentially the year 2000, a little bit before, in really advanced labs like Taiwan, but since that time, uh, safety has improved pretty considerably. Uh, interprocedural stroke, interprocedural serious complications have gone steadily down. The efficacy has gone up, but only incrementally, and mostly based on technology, better tools to do what we do. Um, but not this big breakthrough. And I can remember all the way back in 2000 promising people, check with me in six months, and I'm sure <laughs> that this breakthrough is going to happen, and then we'll understand what we're doing, and this will be a lot better. And it's now. 15 years from then. Well, we have had 20 years, actually, of, of data showing the preponderance of work on potentials in pulmonary veins, but that is now changing, and that's kind of what, where we're going with what's off the shore now, correct? I think so. So there's some very interesting ideas, very interesting hypotheses that might take us that, that next level off the plateau. And one of them is, uh, in the paper cited, related to the autonomic hypothesis of atrial fibrillation, that Atrial fibrillation, in addition to being triggered from the pulmonary veins, and that still will always be part of this, I think, but there's kind of a, a double hit hypothesis, hyperactivity in the cardiac autonomic nervous system. Um, in animal models, it's very well documented that that seems to have a lot to do with the syndrome. Models are what they are, but the animal models for atrial fibrillation, at least in the initiation and maintenance uh, forms of the, the model, are, are pretty representative. So, could somehow our understanding of the autonomic nervous system be one of the next frontiers for this? That'd be very exciting. The paper that you're talking about is from the University of Oklahoma group, and they've given us some really decades of large animal data on AF and the autonomic nervous system. What is it that they're reporting in Jack? The mechanisms of what they're what they're trying to do. So it is very clear that stimulation of the vagus is very powerful and also bimodal. So in the animal models, stimulation of the vagus at high intensity produces atrial fibrillation in animals whose hearts would otherwise be too small to, to support an atrial fibrillation. But this is low-level vagal stimulation with a non-invasive way of doing that, um, which is with a little clip electrode placed on the tragus of the ear. Uh, stimulation is low-level and importantly, seemingly below the level of pain stimulation, uh, importantly below the level where um, the sinus node uh, rate is affected. So in that threshold, we're low level, painless, and without you know, encouraging atrial fibrillation, very right. low intensity stimulation. This is not just the only approach, though. You talk about some others, too, and even the title of your piece, you're looking at integrating anatomic, physiologic, neurologic, and cardiovascular principles all into some novel therapies. What else are you thinking could be down the road? Primarily what we were talking about was different ways of addressing the autonomic nervous system. So there's a lot of wondering about renal nerve denervation, particularly after the simplicity trials um, kind of had an unexpected result. Um, I'm not an expert in treatment of hypertension, but we wonder about that way of assessing the autonomic nervous system for treatment of atrial fibrillation or a ventricular tachycardia storm. Um, there's a lot of trials going on with uh, pacemaker-like devices stimulating the, the cervical vagus uh, for treatment of heart failure in particular, but we also are wondering about the sudden death signal of that and think that that's going to be very important. So the autonomic nerve way of looking at things is a, is a great hypothesis, however it's approached, potentially. So you used to tell patients, wait six months, and it's been a long six months. <laughs> what are you saying now? Is it, like, are we talking a year, five years, ten years before some of this comes to pass, do you think? Well, I think the problem with the autonomic hypothesis is how to augment it. So the initial way of doing that has been uh, what electrophysiologists always do. We try to destroy something. So right. the uh, ganglionated plexus, plexi can be addressed with catheter ablation and disrupted with the hope that remodeling will then make them more normal. Um, the outcome data for that has not been overwhelmingly convincing. There have been some positive studies, but it has not been enough to really um, get people thinking about it. The 
other ways of applying this are going to take even longer to, to come to fruition. I think that the low-level trigger stimulation has some potential legs for this, but it really is just at the beginning. The study that was in the Jack article is really a proof of concept. Um, and the pacing studies of the cervical vagus are ongoing, but large studies that are we're going to take a while to, to look at, and atrial fibrillation is only a very secondary endpoint of any of that. Well, I mean, it's, it's exciting. I mean, really, they're looking at a non-invasive, non-ablative, non-pharmacological therapy for AF. And this is in Jack, the paper from uh, Dr. Callens, the main paper which is uh, called Low-Level Transcutaneous Electrical Vagus Nerve Stimulation and How It Suppresses Atrial Fibrillation. This is all in the March 10th issue of JAK. For Cardiosource World News, I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.